Could Sepp Kuss survive the final difficult classic style mountain stage or Remco Evenepoel get that final W? A difficult medium mountain stage has become tradition in stage 20 of La Vuelta, finishing in Guadarrama in the northwest of Madrid, but none of the climbs were that difficult. The last climb has the steepest section, about 1k at 10%, and yeah, it's a tricky stage, 200k's semi-classic length for Sepp Kuss, but you knew it was a green light for the breakaway in this stage. Look at this, look at the peloton. What, do you, what don't you see? You don't see any Jumbo Vismas in the first 50. That means breakaway has a green light. And so Bahrain, Lotto, and particularly Wildpools, Remco, Soler were on the move. We'd see these protagonists later in the stage and a huge break formed. Luckily for Jumbo, or maybe by design, I was kind of I was on a train. That's why I missed the stage yesterday. My flight to Madrid got cancelled. Disaster. I don't want to regale you with that story. But huge break when G, Zvihoff, Van Aedfeld, Jumbo chilling, they gradually let the gap out. And so it was a the most straightforward stage possible for Sepp Kuss. But Remco was in there with teammates, and that was a problem for the other riders. So yes, there's a, a big break with a lot of riders that could attack him. But with three strong domestiques, Cataneo could almost win this stage in his own right. Uh, Knox is very strong, but also Vavarka is really good in the medium mountains like this. So despite Zvihoff trying to spice things up and G taking over with 70Ks to go, Quickstep played it pretty well because they didn't just close it down every time and act as defensive riders. They would pace hard with Vivarca when these small groups formed or when uh, Paleo Sanchez attacked, Burgos Beate rider, really good out of contract, rumoured to go to Movistar next year. They don't just chase it back. They make Catania go across and so now everyone has to chase them and Remco and Vivarca and Knox can sit in the wheels and it's Mark Soler's problem or Grant Thomas' problem or Bora's problem or Lenny Martinez's problem. So I think the way they managed it was pretty good in the mid phase of the race and then as they got deeper into the final, they could change a little bit to, okay, we can launch Remco. And, and this is they, they did really lock this stage down. Like the drama of 2021 when Lopez got off the bike, this stage didn't have that. So the break gets to the second last climb, the Puerto de la Cruz Verde, and that's what they're doing. They're just setting pace with Vivarca. No one's going to attack off this pace. If they do, Catania will mark you. And Pauls doesn't have multiple teammates. Costa doesn't either. Stage winner already in this race. Vavarka does the flat. Last climb. This is the hardest one of the day. On the outskirts of Madrid, some pave, steep sections, even a Glasgow-looking section like George Street coming up. But while Pauls anticipates that, he doesn't just let Catania pace. He doesn't let Remco attack when he wants. He goes first. And there's no response from Remco Evenepoel. He sat in the wheel of Matteo Catania. Leonard Van Eidvold, this is the Glasgow-looking street I was talking about. Leonard Van Eidvold's on the wheel of pools, and Remco's not really responding himself, which actually was quite smart, because these two have gone absolutely full. They uh, do seem to have more punch than Remco on the stage, but they're going to have to recover, and also they cancel each other out in a little bit. It's uh, Peleo Sanchez and Soler that are in Group 2. Remco's not even with them, he still sat behind Catania in Group 3, which, as I said, there's a flat a bit now, and then it kicks up again uh, right before the descent, and that's where Van Eyvold and Paul's here, a little bit of finessing, it is worth being on the wheel, and they attack each other a couple of times, and so I think Remco did play it pretty smart for the legs that he did have, because Paul's looks back, sees Remco, watches Van Eyvold, and he waits for his head to snap back forward, the minute it snaps back forward, Bang, he's going to attack. He doesn't want Remco to come back. Didn't want to bring Van Eyvold with him, but that's why when Remco did try to bridge across, he probably picked the right time to do it, and he, he was correct to sit with Catania. But Paleo Sanchez was so strong too. One of the best performances from a Burgos rider in, in a long time in a big race like this, dropping Remco even on the final climb. But on the descent, not much cohesion. Remco was really, really fast and good coming back. In fact, he, he gets across them and immediately attacks them on the straighter sections, but Soler brings him back in the corners. And what was curious to me was, these guys, or well, Oyulas Cano starts in the GC group, nothing happened there. He does a lead out for Mars, who gets out of the saddle for two seconds and then stops. And yeah, they pretty much how you so marks it, and Jumbo Visma shut things down with Roglic this time. It was Vingegaard on Cruz de Linares, and today it was Roglic 
uh, for Coos. Mars tried again after that, but Ayuso was having none of it. Even though there wasn't that much time between the three Spaniards, Ayuso, Mars, and Landa. Otobrooks was dropped there, though. But what was curious was Soler pulled through, and Van Aethelt and Sanchez, they were skipping turns a little bit here in the run-in. They're not stupid. They know Pauls has got a really good sprint, and Pauls just marking Remco. He knows. They all know Remco's the favourite in the group, but Pauls... He won Liege Baston Liege too. We've got two Liege Baston Liege winners in this group, and one is a fox. While Pools starts his sprint from range before this left hand bend, and if you look here closely, Remco's watching, and he doesn't check back again. And he was fiddling with his head unit, maybe changing his maps, and it took his hands off the bars twice. And it's as Pools launches just before this left hander. Does that cost him a fraction of a second to react? I think it surely does. Is it the difference in this finish? Because Pools went at like 350 plus. He dropped Remco on the climb, so I guess he figured why not make it the hardest sprint possible, mano y mano. But Remco gradually claws him back, getting back into the draft. But he's not able to get out of it in time, despite coming with speed. While pulls out Fox's Remco in the finish, and he was incredibly strong on the climb pulls where he was the initiator. So he deserved the win. Bahrain and he have been incredibly strong in this third week. Back in the GC group, though, Jumbo Visma shut it down. Ota Brooks was dropped, so Almeida pulled as well, and he would lose his seventh in GC. But it was all about the Jumbo Visma trio having their own little procession across the line, celebrating Sepp Kuz in advance of the real procession in Madrid tomorrow. But here's the stage results. Wildpool's winning ahead of Remco, even a pool. Pleo Sanchez third, great result for him. Then Van Effelt, Soler, Costa won the groups from behind. Here is what Kuz had to say after the stage. Yeah, super relieved. I'm still uh, I'm still recovering from that last climb. <laughs> but uh, yeah, almost made it. <laughs> Take us through the stage. Is it uh, the scenario you wanted with this uh, big breakaway? Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, yeah, it was it was perfectly in control thanks to the guys in the beginning. And uh, yeah, Robert and Dylan <laughs> were pulling uh, not 90% of the day of, of the stage, and uh, yeah, it was a uh, long, long, hard day, and and they were out there all day. So uh, yeah, just just big hats off to them. They were amazing, and then then um, uh, Tilo was there on the last climb. And uh, Primoz did a lot of work for me uh, there on the on the last climb and on the flat as well with Jonas. And uh, yeah, that's just uh, <laughs> something I never imagined. In terms of GC, not big changes or really big attacks. It was a bit of a dud stage, to be honest, on GC. The only change was Ozerbrooks losing time on that final climb and his teammate Vlasov jumping him into seventh but we've got the final sprint tomorrow rain's predicted maybe it will be a little bit chaotic i don't know if they'll neutralize it i'll be here on site if you see me make sure you say hello but until then ciao